Shalom from Israel. I am Shira Sokoram, and I want to welcome you to Israel Frontline, your guide to Israel and the Middle East. We want to give you a biblical perspective on the political and social current events in Israel as they happen. What you will hear on this program will contrast sharply with the biased reporting we are receiving from most of the world media. Today, we begin a four-part series about Jerusalem. On today's program, our goal is to give you a deeper understanding of the history of Jerusalem, along with insight into the importance this city has in the eyes of God. On the program today, where is Mount Moriah? Jerusalem in the Bible and today the debate over the biblical narrative, truth versus fiction. Finally, our panel of Israelis will offer their insight into Jerusalem and her significance. 4,000 years ago, a Chaldean man climbed a hill to sacrifice his son according to a command from God. It was there, after Abraham's obedience to the voice of God was tested and proven, that an angel prevented the sacrifice and instead provided a ram caught in a bush. According to the book of Genesis, this heavenly appearance happened in a place called Mount Moriah. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. A thousand years later at this sacred site, which was then an ancient threshing floor, another angel appeared to King David and stopped a terrible plague decimating Israel. According to the book of Chronicles, it was at this place that David instructed his son, King Solomon, to build a magnificent temple to the glory of God. Now Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to his father David, at the place that David had prepared on the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. From then on, for three millennia, Mount Moriah, located in the heart of the city of Jerusalem, represents the soul and essence of the Jewish faith. But Jerusalem is not only holy to the Jewish people. For over a billion Christians around the world, Jerusalem is where Jesus, whose name in Hebrew is Yeshua, was crucified, resurrected, and where he ascended to heaven. Jerusalem was at the center of some of the most important events in the life of Yeshua. Moreover, Muslims claim the city as their third most holy place in their religion. In Islam, it is believed that the very same Temple Mount, holy to Jews and Christians, is the place where the founder of their religion, Muhammad, ascended to heaven on a white horse. Let's explore the biblical story of Jerusalem. <music> Nearly 3,000 years ago, during the 11th century BC, King David conquered the city of Jerusalem from the Jebusites. He then established Jerusalem, also called Zion in the Bible, as the capital of the people of Israel. King Solomon, who succeeded David in the 10th century BC, constructed the first permanent temple on Mount Moriah, a truly magnificent structure. The completion of this project redirected the focus of Jewish worship from multiple locations around the country to one single location, the Temple Mount a change that made Jerusalem the most important religious and political center in the nation. Three times a year, the entire population of Israel would come to Jerusalem to celebrate the high holidays, Passover, 
the Feast of Weeks, which is in English is Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. For hundreds of years, this small hill in Judea was the most important site on earth for the Jewish people as the place of communal worship, fellowship, and God-appointed celebrations. In 586 BC, Babylonian King Nebuchadnezzar exiled the Jews from the city and destroyed Solomon's temple. Seventy years later, the Jewish people returned to Jerusalem under the leadership of Ezra and Nehemiah and rebuilt the temple, this time a humble replica of the original. Nevertheless, the temple once again stood and the priests renewed sacrificing burnt offerings for their sins to the God of Israel. Centuries later, Herod the Great spent 46 years transforming the modest temple into an extraordinarily impressive edifice. But in 70 AD, the Roman legion totally destroyed it and forced most of the remaining Jews into exile. Through the centuries that followed, the city rose and fell in importance and exchanged hands multiple times. After the Romans came and left, they were followed by the Byzantines and then the Persians. In the seventh century, the Muslims took control of Jerusalem and the Holy Land, a grip that lasted up until the Crusaders, who conquered the city in 1099, only to lose it back to the army of Saladin in 1187. When we speak of the world, most of us nowadays would think about borders and boundaries through the prism of the nation state. Countries like England, India, Sweden, Israel. But the reality is that for most of history, the world has been dominated by empires and regional superpowers. For the people in Jerusalem, one empire after another governed the area. This was the reality of life until the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948. What is now known as Israel was, for most of the last 500 years, a relatively insignificant province of conquering empires. Between 1517 and 1917, Jerusalem and the entire Holy Land was a minor province of the Ottoman Empire. In 1917, Israel became part of the British Empire, which ruled until the independence of the State of Israel in 1948. During the British rule, there was an ever-increasing tension between the Jewish and Arab populations in the country, which exploded into violent clashes multiple times. In 1948, The modern state of Israel came into existence following a UN vote. But within 24 hours, the Arab nation struck Israel from every direction, resulting in the War of Independence. Israel survived, but the precious symbol of Israel's faith, the city of Jerusalem, was split between Israel and the nation of Jordan. The western part of the city of Jerusalem was declared the capital of Israel, but the old city and the Temple Mount under Jordanian control were out of the reach of the Jewish people. Jerusalem was in fact two separate cities sharing one joint ceasefire line, and it remained this way for 19 years. This all changed on June 7, 1967. On the third day of the Six Day War, Israeli paratroopers stormed the alleyways of the old city and reached the Temple Mount, uniting the city and fulfilling God's promise for the restoration of Jerusalem. It was once again the capital city of the Jewish people, and prayers in Hebrew were voiced once more along the Western Wall, one of the supporting walls of the Temple Mount.
Let's take a minute to talk about the ongoing debate related to the accuracy of the story of the city of Jerusalem, detailed in the Bible. You might be asking yourself, what's there to discuss? Facts are facts. Well, things are not that simple. Scholars have questioned the very existence of the kingdom of David and Solomon as depicted in the Bible. Some claimed David was just a small tribal leader with no significant influence on the region. And others went so far as to claim that David is completely fictional, like King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Similar claims were made about King Solomon and the temple. All this is part of a wider criticism on the authenticity of the Bible as a whole. The reasoning behind this line of thought runs deeper than a purely academic debate. The underlying message is that the modern state of Israel is a creation of the modern age without historical ties to the land. In other words, it isn't strictly about archeology span or history, but rather an attempt at undermining God's promises. Muslim politicians and religious leaders have picked this narrative up and have run with it, claiming that the ancient nation of Israel never existed. If you've been watching this program, you know by now that this is not an isolated event. In every issue related to Israel, you will find there's a debate over the most basic of facts because there are two powers and agendas at work here. Those who follow God's word and see events in light of his promises in the Holy Scriptures versus those who do not believe the word of God and his promises. But something incredible has happened over the last decade. Overwhelming evidence has been found providing archaeological support to the absolute accuracy of the Bible. This has included the discovery of the actual outer wall of the city of David in 2005, along with many smaller discoveries over the years. One of the best known examples is the discovery of an inscription with the words House of David and a reference to his kingdom discovered near the ruins of the ancient city of Dan in northern Israel. It's almost comical to see how, after decades of attempting to disprove the Bible, the academic world has found the opposite of what they set out to find, irrefutable evidence to the accuracy of the Bible. A recent important discovery is the site of Sha'arim in the Ella Valley, which is mentioned as an outpost of the kingdom of David and is in the exact location described during David's battle with Goliath in 1 Samuel 17. Both discoveries contradict a prevalent hypothesis, which states that David's kingdom, if he even existed, never reached the borders mentioned in the Bible. We now have proof to the contrary. David's kingdom existed and extended exactly into the regions the Bible indicates. Maos Israel Ministries is a Messianic Jewish nonprofit organization based in Tel Aviv. We exist to be a witness of the good news to the people of Israel through outreach, discipleship, and raising up godly leaders. We translate and publish outstanding faith books in Hebrew and powerful testimony books to reach non-believers. We have a Hebrew outreach website with original media content produced by our team. We support the Hebrew-speaking congregation Tiferet Yeshua in Tel Aviv. We sponsor and host seminars and conferences. We support our Arab Christian brothers who love Israel and the God of Israel. Our I Stand with Israel Fund serves as a benevolence outreach, meeting the practical needs of Israeli believers. Our dream is to see God's promises fulfilled until the day when all Israel will be saved. Welcome back to Israel Frontline. We will now turn to our panel of Israeli guests for their perspectives and thoughts about Jerusalem. Today in the studio with us are Mati Shoshani, Director of Operations for TBN Israel from Jerusalem. Shani Ferguson, 
co-founder of Yeshua Israel Ministries, also from Jerusalem, and Israel Pachter, pastor of Beit Hallel Messianic Congregation from Ashdod in southern Israel. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. In the past decade, there have been significant archaeological discoveries in Jerusalem and across Israel. Mati, would you describe some of the discoveries which have proven the presence of the Jewish people in the land of Israel for many, many millennia? I'd be happy to. First, let's lay the foundation, uh, just so everyone at home knows this. That right now, there's overwhelming evidence for the fact that the Bible is true to the letter. In other words, the kingdom of David, the kingdom of Solomon, the temples built by them, the cities built by them, even to the, you know, the small outposts of their kingdom exist. And some of the things found in the last decade, I'll just give you a few examples. There was a, a stamp found with the name Bed David, or the house of David, uh, up north. There were records of trade with the kingdom of Solomon. There was a city that's mentioned in 1 Kings uh, and 1 Samuel, talking about the outposts of the kingdom of David. There were the walls of the kingdom of the, the city of David, which is south of the current city of, uh, of Jerusalem. So the, just, again, more and more and more evidence. What's interesting is the Muslim authorities in the Temple Mount excavated uh, under the current Temple Mount, under the, the mosque that's there. Yes. And a lot of the evidence that was found in there, they actually tried to destroy. But what was found in that rubble was, again, evidence all the way from the time of David, the first temple, Solomon, and all the way through everything that's mentioned in the Bible. And well, what's interesting to me is many of the archaeologists are atheists. So I wonder what their feeling is as they discover these things right out of the Bible, and they were probably in their minds quite sure that a lot of this wasn't true. There are a lot of you know, discussions in, when, you, when you talk in, in this field about how true these documents are, the Bible and other, other books. And what's interesting is usually they'll say, you know, you talk about like people like King Arthur, you know, in, in the UK, they'll right. say, oh, it's just, you know, it's mythology. Yeah. But King David, it's, it's very interesting. King David, Solomon, there's just, you know, again, overwhelming evidence. And people at first didn't want to believe it, but they just had no choice. It's, you know, ev every verse, suddenly something pops up in a different location. And it's like there's more and more evidence to these, again, right. the, the authenticity of the Bible. Right. I think it's also significant that they found these items up north like he was describing because some people would argue that David was just kind of a tribal leader locally and, and yeah. that his influence wasn't that, um, that, his influence grew with history telling. Okay, Shani, how do the different communities of uh, Jewish people in Israel view the Bible and what we would call the Bible narrative? The different ones, let's say the ultra-Orthodox, how do they look at it? I think it's, it would be pretty easy to make a blanket statement when it comes to the re religious Jews because they would believe in the Bible and as, the, is. A, as is and the story that is behind it and keeping the traditions from, from right. the back of the day. I, I think the small um, percentage of super, super liberal atheists kind of trying to make a point not to believe in God would be the only people that would even consider not believing that David existed and, and King Solomon existed. And but do you think they still don't believe it if, with all of the discoveries? I think they, um, on principle, if they don't believe it, it would be basically on principle and not necessarily because they found evidence su as such. It's just, well, we just don't believe the Bible in general. We believe the entire Bible is fiction mm -hmm. and therefore anything in it is not relevant to us, a, a historical fact. I just want to comment and say that you know, for, for the outside viewer, Israel, generally speaking, Orthodox or non-Orthodox, most Jews, most of the people in Israel believe in God. And not only that, they believe in the Bible. And then what's left is, you know, this discussion of the small details. Did this exact, happen this exact yes. way? Mm -hmm. And so on and so forth. And what we study in schools, actually, is that it's more of a, you know, a sort of like a loose uh, you know, document. It's not entirely... Yes. Uh, accurate, but reality, of course, is the more you research it, the more you find that it is accurate, the Bible is accurate, and most Jews, again, are happy to find that they're not, it's not disappointing, it's sort of a reassurance of what they already believed right. in, in, you know, inside their heart. Mm -hmm. You know, many years ago, I made a documentary film with Yigal Yadin, who was a very famous archaeologist, mm -hmm. and he was famous for using the Bible to help him locate different places and even cities in uh, the Bible. So uh, I, think it, I think things have changed, though, in the archaeological 
um, circles because, like you said, now it's there. You know, the Bible is true. I, I want to tell a, sh a short story, if I may. It's very interesting. This was one of the biggest debates for, for years. There's a place, first, first Samuel talks about the battle between David and Goliath, and it describes David running down from Saul's camp uh, to a valley. This is in the Elah Valley, which is sort of to the southwest of where Jerusalem is uh, today, near in the Beit Shemesh area. And it describes a city named Sha'araim. And it's sort of in a very specific way. You could see from this place to that place, and they heard things from this place to that. And they never knew where this place was. And it was found about 10 years ago. And it's a Jewish city with, you know, and they, they have their ways of proving that. But I mean, it, it pinpoints the Bible story to the meter yes. or the foot, if you're speaking, yes. you know, American. And I mean, you right. really can stand in the place, look down at the valley and say, I mean, exactly to the word of what the Bible says, this is where they were looking from, from. here's where David was, here's where the Philistines were, I mean, to the letter of the right. Bible. When I moved to Israel 40 plus years ago, um, I, I don't think that anybody really knew where David and Goliath exactly met, but that's not that's true changed, today, yeah. isn't it? I mean, it is uh, the fact that people can go there and visit, so many tourists go to see where David and Goliath fought it out. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, when I was with uh, Professor Egal Yadin, from the Bible, he said, this is, this is Hatzor, a certain place in the north. And before the people actually dug up the, the uh, walls of the city, he said, now uh, start digging a little bit this way and you're gonna find uh, that it looks like this, because he knew it was similar to other things that Solomon yeah. had done. So it's just, it's really, really uh, fascinating. Uh, Israel, in your opinion, what would you say is the most important promise of God that we are now beginning to see fulfilled regarding Jerusalem? Uh, the unity of Jerusalem, the fact that uh, Israel uh, see Jerusalem as its capital and uh, habitated the city of Jerusalem. Yes. Because just to think of the obstacles that were in the, in the way for Israelis to live in Jerusalem and to have Jerusalem as a capital, till today, by the way, mm -hmm. with different embassies, we have different issues. But uh, probably it's the biggest fulfillment because the Jewish people are there. There's lots of debates, not everybody happy about that, not every nation agree with that, but we are living there. And yes. we have two guys with us today from Jerusalem. Uh, so it's a, uh, when Jerusalem uh, became Israeli city, run by Israelis, uh, inhabited by Israelis, actually it's, uh, it's a big portion of the Bible speaks about Jerusalem, future Jerusalem, how we will be scattered to the nations and will come back to our own cities, mm -hmm. back to Jerusalem, back to Israel. Another promise? Uh, I, I just wanna, I wanna comment on, you know, to give the, the large perspective. You know, the Bible, and this is through the prophets, talks about the restoration of the state of Israel. And because we have all this proof of, of how true you know, the stories of the Bible are, that it really existed, we disappeared, we came back, mm -hmm. trying to you know, make that go away is diminishing God's promise. And then seeing you know, all these promises coming into fruition, I mean, every yes. last word of it, mm -hmm. just you know, shows you how incredible this fulfillment of prophecy is. It's not just, you know, we, just, we didn't just return. We returned after all this actually happened, after God fulfilled his word once, we were, you know, left the country, came back thousands of years later, and here every last letter of the Bible is being played out just like God promised thousands of years ago. Right. I, I th it's just amazing to see that, to have that perspective. And knowing that the greatest uh, promise yet to come will be when he returns, mm -hmm. when Yeshua returns to Jerusalem. So, yes, has Jerusalem ever been the capital of any other nation? Uh, generally speaking, we can say no. There were some exceptions in the very little uh, time of history, yes. but uh, no other nation uh, ever claimed the city. Ever claimed the Jerusalem as, as their the center capital, of their, universe. their center, their spiritual center. Mm -hmm. So mostly through the history, you can see the Jerusalem. It's the hope of the Jewish people. Right. It's prayers of Jewish people to come back and live in Jerusalem, right. which has happened in our generation. I would even go further to say that not only is it not generally speaking, been a capital, except for, like he said, maybe 80 years here and 10 years there. It ha has been neglected as a city when it was ever a part of any kind of empire or, yes. or mm. you know. Exactly. So 
it's, exactly. it's been an, almost a non-issue until it's almost like the, the proverbial cookie jar when they're like nobody wants the last cookie until someone goes for it and then everybody <laughs> suddenly wants it. Except right. for the Jewish people, Except of course. Except for the Jewish people. For the Jewish people, not, there wasn't a single day throughout history yes. where this wasn't the focal point of their faith and their hopes, you know, to return to the, the city prayer. and worship God again in, in the city of Jerusalem. Right, right. Well, that's all for today's Israel Frontline. Thank you for watching, and we hope we were able to give you insight and inform you so that you can pray for Israel in a more focused way. For more of my articles about Israel, sign up to the free monthly Maoz Israel report at maozisrael.org slash sign up. Please join us next week for the second in our four episode series about Jerusalem. We will talk about the place we consider to be the heart of the Israeli-Arab conflict, the Temple Mount. On behalf of our team and myself, Blessings and Shalom from Tel Aviv. A good book can make a real difference in a believer's life. The goal of Maoz Hebrew Books Division is to bring great faith books to Israeli readers in their language. We translate, edit, typeset and print these books in Hebrew and then make them available in congregations across Israel. Since the beginning of Operation Protective Edge, over 2,500 rockets have been fired from Gaza into Israel. With the help of your gifts to I Stand With Israel War Victims Fund, we are handing out food vouchers to provide for needy families in this community. Shalom, my name is Eitan, I'm from Kiryat Gat. We are about 35-40 km from Gaza. ונמצאים מתחת האש, נופלים פה טילים, וזה באמת זמן קשה כאן בארץ ומאוד טוב, ו... וברכה שאתם עוזרים היום לאנשים בקריית גת. אנחנו מחלקים כרטיסים שאנשים יכולים לקנות אוכל ובגדים. כרטיס בשווי של 400 שקל. אנחנו מחלקים את הכרטיסים לאנשים שזקוקים כאן בקריית גת, ניצולי שואה, אימהות חדוריות, אנשים שזקוקים לעזרה, וזה מאוד מאוד טוב להרגיש שיש ה... לכם את האהבה כלפי ישראל וכלפי אנשים האלה. מהתרומות שלכם היום פשוט יש הזדמנות לעזור לאנשים כאן בקריית גת. ממש תודה רבה וברכות.